Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we'll take a closer look at Maya Auto Setup for iClone and Character Creator. With this powerful tool, we can not only send assets directly to Maya via Auto Setup, but also generate facial and body control rigs for advanced animation inside Maya. Let's get started with the first part of the tutorial. First, we need to export our animated characters and props from iClone using the Maya preset. In this example, we have two characters talking with subtle movements, along with a stone stand, a wine bottle, and glasses as props. However, for this demonstration, we'll mainly focus on the facial performance. Before exporting, make sure to verify your project's frame rate. Open the project settings, and here we can see it's set to the default 60 frames per second. Now, select each character one at a time and go to File, Export, Export, FBX. Set the target tool preset to Maya and make sure the FPS is also set to 60. Since the characters have animation, we'll need to include that as well. Under Export Range, choose All if you want to export the motion for the entire timeline or define a custom range if needed. For this demo, we'll set it to all. Ensure that embed textures and delete unused morphs are unchecked, then click export. In some cases, you might have multiple motion versions for the same character and are unsure which to use in Maya. You can export each version separately as different motion FBX files and later import them individually into Maya. For example, one version might feature an engaged conversation, while another shows a neutral, nonchalant reaction. Export both versions as separate FBX files. Lastly, export the same character without any animation so that we can apply motion directly in Maya later. Since this version has no animation, select T-Pose or Current Frame as the export pose. Once done, export the props as well, and we're all set to move on. Inside Maya, make sure the Maya Auto Setup plugin is properly installed and active. Before importing any assets, it's recommended to set a Maya project first. This helps organize your scene files, textures, and caches neatly for later use. Now, let's begin by importing the FBX files we just exported from iClone. Navigate to your asset folder and import Aaron's FBX first. Since we have already set up a Maya project, check Collect Textures and assign a folder to store all imported textures here. We'll place them inside the Source Images folder. Once that's set, click Import. After importing, verify that all textures have been applied correctly, then play the animation in the timeline to confirm the import was successful. Next, import the female character with a T-pose, who will receive animation data from the motion FBX files. To make the viewport less cluttered, temporarily hide Aaron by going to Display, Hide, Hide Selection, or simply press Ctrl plus H. To apply motion to the female character, first select her root bone, you can find it directly in the viewport or through the outliner. Then go to File, Import, and navigate back to your asset folder. Select the desired motion FBX file and make sure to change the Files of Type dropdown to FBX to reveal the proper import options on the right. First, make sure the Use Namespaces option is turned on. Then select the character we want to apply the animation to, in this case, Ariana T-Pose. Next, set it to Use Selected Namespace as Parent, and add new namespace so the motion links correctly to our character. Finally, change the file content to Update Animation, and click Import. After a few moments, we can see the animation successfully applied to the character inside the viewport.
To make the viewport cleaner, go to Show, Viewport, and uncheck both Rigging and Animation to hide rig controls and keyframe indicators. We can repeat this same process to import her second motion, the idle, not paying attention animation, to compare variations. Finally, import the props, the stand, wine bottle, and glasses to complete the full setup inside Maya. Since our scene doesn't have any lighting setup yet, we can take advantage of the HDR lighting presets included with the auto setup. Head over to the Look Dev tab and select HDR. Choose the Float Tent preset to create the HDR lighting scene. From there, we can tweak the HDR rotation and adjust the camera position so that the lighting fits our characters perfectly. Now, let's move to the Face Rig tab. First, select your character and click Generate Face Rig. When you do this, the animation gets baked into the face control rig, and you'll see the rig appear in the viewport. A quick note, if your character doesn't have a CC5 HD facial profile, the face rig won't appear directly in the viewport. Instead, the controls will still be accessible in the face rig tab. Back in the viewport, the rig might look a bit jagged because anti-aliasing isn't applied. To fix this, go to Renderer Viewport 2.0, open the options on the right, and in the anti-aliasing section, enable smooth wireframe and multi-sampling anti-aliasing, setting the sample count to 16 for the best quality. If you notice the hair looks too transparent, Switch the transparency algorithm to depth peeling for a correct display. By default, the face control rig follows the head movement. If you want it to stay stationary in 3D space, set face GUI. Follow head to zero. If the rig is obstructed or you want to reposition it, select the head GUI group in the outliner and translate it manually. Switch to the Move tool, press D to adjust the gizmo position, then hold V for vertex snapping and middle mouse click on the corner where you want it to snap. Press D again to exit gizmo editing mode, and now the face rig is positioned perfectly. Before animating the character, let's take a quick tour of the face control panel. On the left, you'll find the major controls for large facial movements. Move these and you'll see big changes instantly. On the right, there are tweakers for finer details and micro expressions, allowing precise adjustments for subtle facial motions. To start animating, we first need to enable auto key and then adjust the face control sliders. But here's an important point. The original facial keys from iClone are baked onto the rig control layer, meaning every frame already has a key. If you simply move a slider on a single frame, the edit will only apply to that frame and won't propagate along the timeline. Move to another frame and your changes disappear. So let's undo that and do it the correct way. Select all the facial controls and create a new animation layer, adding the selected controls to it. Rename the layer for clarity. With auto key enabled, you'll notice this layer starts with no keys. Now you can start adjusting sliders, move his eyes, brows, and forehead to create a surprised expression. Set zero keys to enclose the edits, ensuring everything stays within the intended range. All the edits are now stored in this new animation layer. If you disable it, the changes disappear, which shows that the edits are contained and non-destructive. To fine tune your animation, open the graph editor via Windows Animation Editors. Select the layer you want to edit and make subtle adjustments to curves, smoothing out transitions or enhancing specific expressions. This makes your facial animation much easier to manage and more precise. Next, let's look at creating a body rig using Maya's Human IK system. We've already exported this fight scene from iClone as FBX files. 
Once the character is imported, it's a good idea to save the scene as a Maya file. This way, you can later import it as a reference, which makes your workflow more flexible without constantly re-importing the original FBX. Before saving, we need to create the body rig. Go to the body rig tab, select the root bone, and click Create HIK Definition. Then switch to the rigging shelf, go to Skeleton, and open the Human IK panel. You'll notice Maya automatically detects the character. Check the Definition tab to make sure all the bones are correctly mapped. Green means everything is properly assigned. Once the skeleton is verified, bake the original animation onto the body rig by going to the Bake menu and selecting Bake to Control Rig. Now, controls appear on the character's body, ready for editing and animation. Save this project and open a new one. Import the male fighter using auto setup, then create and bake his body rig the same way. Finally, create a reference for the female character and her body rig. When imported as a reference, you'll notice a small blue diamond on the icon, indicating that the object is referenced. This allows you to work with both characters in the scene without modifying the original files. Before we start animating, we need to add all the controls to a new animation layer. You can marquee select the controllers directly in the viewport or select them from the Human IK panel. Make sure the correct character is active in the panel, in this case, the female character. Once selected, go to the Animation tab and create a new layer for her. Next, import the remaining props and camera from iClone. The camera information is faithfully reproduced inside Maya, so there's no need to reanimate it. Switch to the shot cam to verify that the camera movements match the original animation. With the control rig, animation layers, and camera setup, we can now begin refining the animation. For example, if the fight scene's contact points are slightly off, you can adjust them to ensure maximum realism and proper weight transfer. And that wraps up this tutorial. Hopefully, you found it useful, and we'll see you next time.